Hi there, this is Animation. As you know, winter is coming and so is Christmas. So today I'm going to show you a super, super easy way to create a snow brush in Photoshop so that you can fill your images with snow no matter whether it's snowing or not. So without any further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So here we are in Photoshop and today is a special day because you'll be able to download this complete PSD. Actually, this is a composite. As you can see, in the background layer, we have some people skating and I have cleaned. I have cleaned the background, removed the people and then added the subject. So you'll be able to go ahead and download this PSD. Links are in the description so that we can work on it and add snow to it. All right, we're going to work on this later. First of all, let's create the snow brush. So how do we do that? Let's create a new document first. So go to file new simple and create a new document of any dimension you like let's go ahead and create a 2000 by 2000 pixel let's simply click on this one and it loads the preset you can also go ahead and type it in over here it doesn't matter what your settings are just make sure it's big enough all right you can name it anything you want but i'm going to leave it untitled and create because that's not going to matter right now let's create a black background so how do we create a black background click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color all right let's choose black over there and hit okay right now it's kind of disturbing to see the canvas background also black and the image also black so right click on the outside and choose say default and that's fine if it was not default for you let's go ahead and create a new layer and this is where we'll create the sample snow let's zoom in quite a bit by hitting ctrl or command plus let's take the brush okay the normal brush so click on the drop down and let's choose soft round it doesn't matter right now and we're gonna make it we're gonna customize it to look like a snow brush okay let's choose white as the foreground color you can always go ahead and press D if you press D it resets the swatches to default colors that is black and white and then you can press X to toggle between the foreground and the background let's make sure the foreground color is white all right now if you paint it's just a simple brush we're going to transform it into snow. How do we do that? Very simple. You guessed it, right? Go to Windows and then inside of Windows, there's a very pretty thing called brush settings. Click on that one. It opens up the brush settings right now. It doesn't look like snow. Okay. This is just for trial. All right. So how do we make it look like snow? First of all, let's increase the spacings. Let's decrease the size a bit and increase the spacing. The idea here is to match the texture over here, match any imagery that you see over here to look like snow. So it's looking a little bit like snow, like, right? So if you increase the spacing a little more, that's even better. Let's in decrease the size for now so that you can see more of it right over there. So as you can see, this is a little like snow. Okay, this is looking great. So you can go ahead and increase the spacing even more if you want. And let's decrease the size just for identification purposes over here. Now, let's open up Shape Dynamics. Make sure you click on Shape Dynamics. So size jitter, let's increase it all the way to 100. Now, what is size jitter? Jitter means randomness, okay? How much of a randomness or how much of a variety you need is jitter. And size jitter means how much of a variety you need in size every time you paint. So as you can see, if I paint right now, it is small. If I paint again, it is big. It is small again, it's big again. So it controls that big, small, big, small. So how much of a variety you need in size? So I need 100% variety, but you don't want the snow to be as small as the molecule and at the same time as big as a football. So there's a thing called the minimum diameter. What is the minimum brush size that you want? Okay, so what is the percentage of the minimum brush size that you want? Let's go ahead and decrease the size a little bit. Okay, so that you can see more over here. This is fine. So we're going to increase it a little bit to almost say 47%, 42%, whatever you feel right. Okay, now, right now the brushes look circle. We need to make it oval. So how do we make it oval? Let's come back to the brush dip shape, okay? And simply just squeeze it like that. Oval, there you go. Now you can change the direction. Direction is not looking right. So the snow falls from top to bottom, right? So we're gonna make the direction something like this. We can also keep it angled like that. 
okay and time to time you can change this depending upon the area that you're painting in for example you're painting in some other area you can change it you can change the direction to this you can change it from time to time let's keep it this direction that's looking fine you can also increase the hardness a bit not too much just a little bit now let's come back to shape dynamics let's make sure everything is right size jitter is on point minimum diameter is on point now angle jitter how much of a variety you need in angle, how much of a randomness you need in angle. If you go all the way to 100%, snow doesn't fall in all directions, right? So let's keep it. If it's falling from top to bottom, it has to follow some structure. So let's keep it at around, say, look over here. This should look fine. 4%, that's fine. Let's come to transfer. How much of a variety you need in opacity? Okay, so let's keep it somewhere around this value, 59 or 60-ish, that's fine. Now, scattering, this is important. Once you paint, how much of a scatter you want? Just look over here, it will make things clear for you. Let's increase the scatter a bit. Okay, that's fine, that's looking great. You can choose both axes if you want to, but for me, it's, it's a personal choice. Let's check it off. I didn't find it good so I'll keep it right over there that's looking great and then let's come back to brush tip shape and increase the spacing even more just like this I'll just increase it like this even more and everything looks fine now if you try to paint snow let's try let's delete this layer let's create a new layer and let's try to paint snow over here let's see how well it does let's increase the brush size a bit like that as you can see, we have got snow. That looks pretty good. We might have to increase something called the opacity jitter. Let's come to transfer. Let's increase it to 80%. Let's see. Now that's looking nice. As you can see, you might want to increase this spacing right over there. Now, that does look like snow. And from place to place, you can increase the size of the snow and then paint and decrease the size a bit and then paint for the further areas. And you can use different variations. Now that we have created the brush, we need to save it. Remember, we have created it with the normal soft round brush. So if you don't save it, it will revert back to its default settings. So click on this button right over there. Click on this button and you can name this brush anything you like. So let's name it, say, Snow Brush Final. Okay. And make sure this is checked called Include Tool Settings. You want all of these settings to be saved. Okay. Color is not required. Brush size is not required. Hit OK. All right, now let's get back to this image. We don't need the brush settings anymore because we have saved it. But from time to time, you might have to change the angle, the direction. That's totally upon you. Depends upon the image. All right, let's get back to this image. Let's keep the brush settings to this side. Let's stick it in here right over there. And let's come back to this image. Let's zoom out a little bit. So here we have the background. And just above the background, we have the subject. Behind the subject, let's add some snow. Let's create a layer in between and name it snow behind okay all right so let's decrease the snow brush to small and simply start painting and time to time you might have to change these settings just paint look at how beautiful that looks and this is the snow which is at further distance which is far away okay that looks pretty fine for further snow, that looks pretty good. Take the brush again. I accidentally selected the other two. That's pretty good. That looks great. Now, let's come a little nearer. To come a little nearer, what to do? Increase the brush size by holding the Alt or Option. Hold the right mouse button and drag it to the right. And this is for Windows. If you're using a Mac, it would be Option and Control. Hold Option and Control, the right mouse button, and drag it to the right or left to make it bigger or smaller. Let's make it a little big and paint it right over there. That's fine, that's looking great. Make it even bigger like this and paint a couple of places, not every place. That's fine. If you want, you can change directions, but I don't think I will because I added some angle jitter over there. And one of the greatest things is that if you find a void, if you think this place is missing, this place needs a little bit of snow, you can paint one at a time. Just click, done. Just click, done. It will do the variations automatically. Click, 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 click. You can also go one at a time. So 
Now it's time for us to add snow in front of her. So let's create a new layer on the top above the subject. Okay, this we can name snow front. Something like that, not front, front. Okay, let's zoom out and make the brush size even bigger. Remember, anything which comes closer to the camera or the eye for that matter becomes bigger. So let's make it even bigger and then let's start painting like that. A little bit of snow over her so we can paint one at a time for the snow over here because we don't want snow at random places so there we go especially when it comes to over her we don't want it on her eye or something like that over here that's fine over there that's fine over here just a little bit with the big one over there now let's paint at other areas if accidentally a snow comes you can always move it if we want to that's fine, let's add some extra snow over there, over there, and that's fine. If you think uh, there's extra snow just over her, what you can do, you can always go ahead and take an eraser and erase it. If you think it shouldn't have been here, erase it. If you think it shouldn't have been, for example, over there. No, I kind of like that. Let's over here, let's delete it. It looks kind of obvious. Now, that's fine. Now, that looks realistic. Now, on the top of that, you can always go ahead and move it if you want to. Select the Move tool and you can move this whole layer, right? It's totally movable. Let's go back. And if you want to be more fancy on top of this, you can also apply some blur. Let's go ahead and close the brush settings and let's apply some blur. You can go to Filter. You can go to Blur Gallery and inside of Blur Gallery, there's this Path Blur. Applies an awesome blur to it. Let's go ahead and click on it, but it's a little bit slow but it's amazing. All right, let's choose the direction in which the snow is falling. For example, this direction it is falling. You can increase the speed like that. Simply the speed at which the snow is flowing and accordingly it will adjust the blur. The taper at the end. You can adjust it. End point speed. You just have to play with these values. Okay. Once you're satisfied with this, you can always go ahead and hit OK. Mind you, this is a slow blur, OK? Whatever you apply inside of Blur Gallery is a slow blur. Hit OK and it will take a little time to process the filter. So that's how you create a snow brush and fill your images with snow. I just want you to keep one thing in mind while you're painting. Always keep brush settings open. So go to Windows and then Brush Settings and then when you pick the brush, from time to time, even if you don't use it, keep it open. From time to time, you might have to change the direction or what you can do for even more variety, you can change the roundness, okay? So for some areas, you can have like this and you can thin it out and paint over that area again, decrease the size and do all those kinds of variations if you want to. So that's something which you can do. Also, you can play with the spacings and other values over here for more variety or in other words, for more jitter. So this is something we very quickly did and this is the final result. To sum it up, all I can say is creating a snow brush in Photoshop is very simple. Now, I must warn you, there are lots of ways of doing it. This is just one of the ways. All right. First of all, let's select a very simple soft round brush, the general brush. Okay? Select that and then we're going to modify it using the brush settings. Simply go to Windows and then inside of Windows, brush settings. Now you can just go ahead and play with the angle just like this. Move it like that. Play with the roundness like that and then simply increase the spacing. Decrease the size probably to see more of it over here and increase the spacing even more and play with these values like shape dynamics, scattering until you get this texture look like snow, right? Simply we're gonna play with the angle a little bit and then play with the transfer a little bit and there you go, we have received or made a snow brush very simply and then at the end you can always go ahead and play with the spacing and the angle while you are painting. So that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.